It's an interesting card with a back plate cutout here. There's a unique feature, one that uh, will be of particular interest to small form factor builders. Welcome to Machines and More. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this card. It's the ASUS Dual 4060 Ti. This model in particular is the one with the SSD, the SSD edition. And, and I'll show you why in addition to being a solid choice for a mid-range small form factor build, this card has a feature that can take small form factor builds to the next level. I'll give you an overview of the card. We'll run through some quick benchmarks and then I'll focus some time on discussing the M.2 SSD slot and why you'd actually want to consider a model like this. Before I begin, big thanks to ASUS for their support in providing the card for the review today. However, they are not a sponsor of the channel and you can expect independent testing and objective feedback. The ASUS Dual 4060 Ti is a compact 4060 Ti card based on NVIDIA's 8104 architecture, featuring eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. To this card, they've added a compact dual fan, two and a half slot cooler. It's only 227 millimeters long, by 123 millimeters wide by 49.6 millimeters thick. And while it's not on NVIDIA's SFF ready list because it's below a 4070 in the card hierarchy, the dimensional specs are within those guidelines and the compact size means it's very suitable for those builds. In the current NVIDIA 4000 series ADA GPU hierarchy, it sits above the 4060 and under the 4070. So the benchmarks aren't the focus of the video today, but I will run through them to give you an idea of where this card slots in. Uh, taking a look at some th synthetics, based on these specs, you'll expect the 4060 Ti to perform about 20% better than a 3060 Ti. The 4060 Ti does have DLSS 3 versus DLSS 2 on the 3060 Ti. Subtle set of improvements to frame generation, which we won't have time to discuss here, but certainly not a reason that I would be compelled to upgrade from a 3060 Ti4. In 1440p gaming, which is an ideal resolution to be testing these mid-range cards at, uh, we do see a similar trend here. The 4060 Ti does outperform the 3060 Ti consistently. Overall, about 20%. It does lag behind the 4070 by about 22%. I am testing at higher settings here just to push the cards, but I think for most titles at 1440p, if you play at medium to medium high settings, it should be appropriate to get the frame rates you want. Uh, a graphics card is also a powerful tool for rendering or video editing. And Blender Benchmark, the 4060 Ti does perform quite well. Uh, one thing you might be curious about is the NVENC encoder. Well, on this GPU for re-encoding a 4K video down to 1080, the newer NVENC encoder is only marginally better than the previous Gen 1, at least in an application like this in Handbrake. You are still dependent on the CPU for something like this after all, and the 7900X is still doing some of the heavy lifting here. Based on these tests, this would be a solid choice for a mid-range gaming system. It's not necessarily one you'd upgrade from a 3060 Ti 2, but for a new system builder for an older generation of cards, and it is uh, quite a good upgrade here. If you're concerned about having too much exhausted heat in your system, it's not particularly power hungry either. ASUS's version here only consumes about 125 watts of board power. Similar to some 3060 Ti's, it runs on one single 8-pin power port, and because of that lower power draw, the amount of heat that the cooler has to handle, it's very manageable. And we're talking about a compact cooler here, right? But still, the fans only settle in at a barely audible 1650 RPM, while the temp on the GPU is only about 63 degrees here. The boost clocks come in at 2775 megahertz, which is well beyond the 2565 spec in the uh, uh, OC mode that ASUS gives. You also don't need much power supply because of that. Uh, with this card and your Ryzen 5 or 7 CPUs, you can get away with as little as 550 watt PSUs. 650 watts will give you a little more headroom for more power hungry CPUs. So you might have seen this card in some of my recent builds. This is the Dual 4070 Super. And while both the 4070 Super and the 4060 Ti are both based on ASUS's dual cooler design, the 4070 Super is obviously bigger. But if you look underneath that shroud, uh, you'll notice that the heatsink is actually a little bit different. The ones on the 4060 Ti run lengthwise and the 4070 Super One runs width-wise. 
And there's an implication that's relevant in the SFF space. In general, the lengthwise heat fin setup is better because it encourages the fans as they pass air through the heat sink to help exhaust some of the heat to the outside of the case instead of dumping all of the heat into the case like with this type of design. And for example, in a sub 10 liter case like the Fractal Terra, uh, on one end of the heat sink, the heat gets exhausted out, and on the other end, it goes right into the path of an exhausting case fan. Now, it's not quite a blower design, right? But this type of heat sink design still tends to be more SFF friendly. Let's take a quick listen to the fans here, and keep in mind that it topped out at 1650 RPM, which is about 47-48% uh, um, in the NR200 without any case fans assisting, so they're very, very quiet. Okay, so 4060 Ti, great mid-range gaming GPU. This one isn't going to be spec'd as high uh, of a boost clock out of the box as some of the OC designs, but then again, Asus's own OC model is only spec'd 60 megahertz faster. However, this card does have a unique feature, which I think many users will appreciate and should consider, and that is the M.2 slot on the PCB. So the backplate has a cutaway here. Okay. And the user will just install a thermal pad. The drive is inserted upside down. Okay. And a heat sink with a thermal pad, that's this piece. And that'll mount over the drive. So that's gonna be sandwiched between two cooling elements. Now, if I do have uh, some constructive feedback about this design, it's that the it's kind of hard for the user to line this up properly because you got two very small threaded holes here and, and without any guides or lines on the back plate, you kind of have to, there's a lot of guesswork involved. And if you don't do it right, like I did here, you might uh, scratch up the back plate. So that's just one consideration. How does it work? Well, on a PCIe 4 slot, this GPU is going to use eight lanes. So assuming you're running it on your main X16 slot, you're gonna have unused lanes. And by bifurcating or dividing up the 16 slots to give the SSD its own bandwidth, so you know, do an A plus eight or A plus four plus four, either of these configurations will give the drive at least four lanes. And that's really all it needs. Now there is a catch though, your board has to be capable of bifurcating that slot. And if it can't, this slot is not gonna work. The card will still work, but you, you're not gonna have the, uh, the SSD split off of that main expansion slot. Now ASUS only provides a list of their own boards that can work. There are other brands uh, where bifurcation is possible, but ASUS isn't going to guarantee it. I tested this functionality with my ASUS B650E ITX board, and this one has a Gen 5 expansion slot and Gen 5 front M.2, so it's kind of the perfect platform to test this. For the drive testing, I primarily used the MP700 Gen 5 drive here, but I also tested a Gen 4 Western Digital SN750 as well. You do have to go into the BIOS and change the setting first before installing the SSD. And once you do that, you can just pop the drive in and then reinstall the card. And it even has the uh, Q-latch here for a toolless mount. Mounted up, there practically was no difference in GPU performance with or without the SSD, just run to run variants. So obviously um, it, it was only using eight lanes, it's still getting eight lanes, so it should work the same. So why would you want this? Well, first off, the obvious reason would be to simply add another drive or add capability for another M.2. Many boards, especially mini ITX boards, only come with two spots. There's one at the front, and sometimes there's a second one at the back of the board. Now in this scenario, this would be just a simple way to add another drive, probably the only way on a single expansion slot board like on a mini ITX board. The second reason, perhaps you have a Gen 5 slot already like on my uh, mini ITX board that I tested, but you wanna run another Gen 5 drive. So provided you have a Gen 5 expansion slot like my board here, you can get Gen 5 speeds on the drive, no problem. And these speeds are pretty much the same that you can get on the primary slot. So it's debatable if you actually need 
Gen 5 speeds, but that's kind of not the point here, right? Because if you got a Gen 5 drive, then you want to get the most out of it. And the fact is you can get Gen 5 speeds here if you want. You'd have to be careful though, if your board's primary M.2 slot already feeds off of the primary uh, expansion slots lanes, then the GPU mounted drive will now take precedence over. So you may have diminished performance on that uh, motherboard drive, or you may not even see it at all. So many mini ITX boards feature the second M.2 drive at the back of the board. And this is actually not an ideal location because even if you had a heat sink on your drive, the airflow is very poor here. So drive thermals are not going to be ideal. So a third reason this setup might make sense would be drive thermals. When you mount the drive on this 4060 Ti, it shares into the GPU's cooling capability. My back slot is a Gen 4 slot, so I use a Gen 4 drive for this part of the testing. You can see the drive idles at the same temp in the main slot or on the GPU, and you can see it's a good deal warmer on the back slot, uh, but it's really nothing of concern when, when the drive is idling. But once the drive is loaded, then at least one of the temp sensors for that rear slot reports a very high temp. Uh, the drive when mounted on the GPU slot is even cooler than the motherboard's main slot with heatsink. Uh, one consideration is that it shares in the GPU's cooling. So through thick and thin, good times are when the GPU is idling, but what about when the GPU is loaded? So with the GPU at load, I re-examined the drive temps and I saw that it was just a bit warmer than the main slot when the drive was loaded. So it's certainly nothing of concern. With the Gen 5 drive, which is typically going to run hotter, similar scenario here, very good temps. Even when the GPU was loaded, the temps are still better than the motherboard's main heatsink. So in summary, I think this is a great idea. Now it may have a niche set of uses and users, but within the SFF space, I think many of those use cases are very applicable. So right now the 4060 Ti is the only model that has this feature. If you happen to want a 4060 Ti, then great. But really, I'd love to see ASUS deploy this on a wider variety of models especially on the higher SKUs given now that we have Gen 5 bandwidth. Reference price on this model is $430, so a premium of about $30 over the version without the SSD, and I think that's quite fair. At a minimum, you simply can't just add another M.2 slot to your board if you need it, even for $30, so um, yeah. So that'll do it for this read. Definitely consider this for your next SFF build. Make sure you give a like and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'll leave links down below. Thanks for watching.